welcome our next Headlight Talk speaker. Hello everyone, welcome back. I hope your caffeine has kicked in by now, but it hasn't. I have got one more way to boost your focus. Let's see. Thank you so much once again for joining me and having me here. I am Harshita Hassani and I'm currently working as a product designer at Optum, which is a healthcare organization. And today I'll be sharing something which I think most of you are already familiar with or have come across. But I'm sharing something here today, which I'm practicing from past two to three years. And it's an interesting way to solve any kind of problem you undergo. I hope you find it valuable. Before I dive in, I would like to ask, how many of you sitting here have ever found yourself stuck trying to solve a design problem, struggling to come up with creative solutions? Quite a few. Thank you. I'll take you back to one of the incident. A few years back, I was when I was in my master's final semester of design, we were supposed to choose a thesis topic. And me being interested in most of the uh, regimes, I was looking for healthcare, from fitness, for AI, for design for elderly, and what not. I was doing Google research and was trying to find trends and topics around. I was quite overwhelmed. It was a lot on my head to think about all the topics which I want to work upon in the coming time. Then I did one thing. I took a pause and shut down my system. I haven't used any digital medium for at least two to three days. And then I just started my drawing file and few pens and paper around. I just started scribbling what was there in my mind. But what I started with? I started with, who am I? What exactly I like to do? What I can do for next six months? What are my strengths, weaknesses? After narrowing down a couple of topics, I found that healthcare is, and fitness is something what I resonated with a lot. And then, but what exactly in healthcare and fitness? I chose a topic of polycystic ovarian syndrome. It might be something which you have heard, or something which you might not have heard. Well, I was diagnosed with this disorder when I was in standard eighth. And that time, it was not prevalent at all. So I just started doodling, although these are refined ones, but I scribbled first with pencil. And I just started doodling, like, what was there which impacted me? All the kind of things, the role of doctors, how much money I have invested in to get this tr disorder treated, because that time I was not aware that it can be treated through lifestyle changes. I continued scribbling. There was a role of a caregiver, who is in my case is my mom. She has helped me in getting this disorder treated on my own through simple lifestyle changes. After mapping this, one more question struck me. Being a non-medical student, I am not from a medical background. Will I be able to convince others? Will I be able to treat this disorder? I continued sketching. Just sketching the notes which I'm getting from people around in the industry, all the senior gynecologists, all the people who are suffering from this disorder, disorder and I learned from them a lot. I read a couple of research papers. I read about ovarian dysfunction, androgen access, hormonal imbalance, all the human anatomy, it just went above my head. I couldn't relate it to all the medical terms. But then, again, I started mapping visually what it is happening. All the research paper, like almost 50 to 60 research papers I have read, but every research paper was saying the same thing. I started mapping down what exactly happens internally in a woman's body. What it is a pituitary gland, what it is an endocrine system, how exactly does it work within a woman's body, 
I tried to map everything out. And then I realized that it's making sense. I was able to comprehend it, but I was not able to comprehend it earlier. Then curious me asked my grandmother, was this kind of problem existing earlier also? Because right now it's at peak. Then my grandmother shared a couple of historical aspects like what they do consider when somebody undergo this disorder and why this disorder is right now prevalent. After understanding the historical aspects, I was able to map the role of entire care network, role of doctors, role of my mom, who are the real sufferers, why the awareness is still not there about this disorder. Everything was so connected. I was able to understand the complexities of system with more clarity. I tried to share this with my mentor effortlessly. In no time, earlier I was struggling a lot to talk to her about this, but she being from design, I being from design, we were not able to have one communication. After this, now, that was my journey, but how I can visualize this entire data to help others who might be going through this, order, this disorder. So I data visualized my entire journey using circles right from 2008 till 2017. It's a spiral network which exactly d d shows what I have been going through. But this still might be looking beautiful, but how will it help others? Again, that question bothered me because the root of the problem is that Adolescents are still not aware about this disorder. So I designed a menstrual tracker for adolescents so that they can keep a track on every day what happens in their body. And this idea, the other idea, were internationally recognized by a lot because that they found that it's an interesting medium to share about it with others. I got a chance to express this in annual PCY summit held at India. They actually appreciated the power of how a creative way can actually make this complex disorder in easier terms visualize. You know what? Until now, I didn't know that this is known as visual thinking. I was just doing it what was coming from within. If my heart was saying, just scribble it out, I scribbled it. If my mind was saying, just talk to others, I talked it. But when I was reading this book, Bag of the Napkin by Don Ra Dan Rom, he said, visual thinking refers to the mental process of constructing and manipulating visual images in the mind's eye, using diagrams, sketches, symbols, and other visual tools to represent information. But do you know why visual thinking is so powerful? Because 75% of our sensory neurons are visual and our brain processes visuals 60,000 times faster than text. Apart from this, there is a hand and brain connection too. And it's said that hand is mightier than mouse. Milton Glaser, who is the celebrated American graphic designer said, we are always looking, but we never really see. When you draw, the mind becomes deeply, intensely attentive. But dude, what is shit talking about from past 10 minutes? Okay, drawing is important, but I don't know how to draw. I am scared of blank canvas. How is it different from drawing on an iPad? You are talking about drawing it on paper? I don't have time and find it valuable. I am in an executive setting. I will just listen. Well, I completely acknowledge and understand your thoughts. I'm sure there might be more questions in your mind, which we can take it up later. But after reading a couple of books by Dan Rom, I understand that there are various ways to do this. Firstly, visual thinking has nothing to do with drawing. We all are blessed with our built-in tools, our eyes, our mind's eye, and hands. That's all we require. But apart from this, just basic things, few papers which are right there on your tables, pencil or pen, and some whiteboard or markers if you are in an office setting.
so i would like you all to just take some paper or pen whatever you have around and let's break this ice of you all can draw let's start with a small circle and a bigger circle yeah i think uh, most of you are done with that in the small circle just make your doodle yourself whatever you like to or make some emoticon whatever is easier for you and write down me under that and in the second circle just write my problem beneath that i think most of you are done with that in this bigger circle where we are mapping my problem any kind of design problem or any kind of problem you undergo we can convert it into a big pizza it starts with 6 w's and 1 h right from the first you can just put three lines under that no no matter it it need not be perfect it's fine in whatever way, shape you have drawn so start with who what then how much where when how and why just map this thing in that circle yeah but we can take that later you just need to map it out okay one second one second sorry i think most of you are done with it i firstly want to congratulate you all that you all are drawing here and next you remember our childhood when we used to draw dot line arrow square triangle circle and blob this is what we have learned in childhood and we just need these seven basic building block shapes to start visualizing using that we can start with representing the pizza using this like we can start with seeing from who you can draw a portrait or your caricature or whosoever is the user in your product then how much can be represented through a chart where can be represented through a map or any navigation and then when can be represented through a timeline just flow of arrows basic arrows how can be represented through a flow chart and why can be represented through an equation cause and effect now interesting part is after mapping all this how we can determine the complexity of problem to turn it into the creative solution there comes the role of asking these couple of question starting with who and what who is going on around me who am i designing for what comes first and what comes next how long is the problem do we have enough of x to budget it out where are we going now can we alter the outcomes of a situation altering the altering our actions what are we really doing and why is it the right thing will it impact the di direct users or should we be doing something different all this i have summarized this into a 3s framework which you just need to remember start with seeing that pizza in every problem scribble it out and then show it across to your stakeholders or maybe in group and see like how you can cross fertilize those ideas but harshita i draw it on ipad is it different from drawing it on paper 
Well, I feel more focused when I'm drawing it on paper, but I've seen a couple of people who are drawing it on iPad. So start experimenting it and see if that works for you. That can be the, that can be the medium for you, but for me, this has worked better. Do you know, all the successful winners in technology, finance, and business have one thing in common, they drew. That was my journey, but I was surprised to look to others. Leonardo da Vinci, you know what? He observed the flight, and his concept of flying design machine has come from just scribbling. Nikola Tesla, he used to observe and visualize everything. Whatever he shares across, he used diagrams in comp in finding complex problems. Edison has brought up the interesting concept on Bright Idea Notebook. He shared that he used to carry this Bright Idea Notebook across everywhere. And he said, please scribble whatever comes into your mind and then relook at that notebook every time. You may find some dots connecting and your ideas emerging. So basically, he introduced the concept of cross-fertilizing your ideas for a bigger invention. My presentation won't be completed without introducing him. Being a part of US healthcare organization and seeing the complexity, this person has visualized that entire 1,500-page document into the narratives on paper napkin. I would love you to all check it out, his presentation around that, and you will learn about US healthcare in no time. Well, this was all about what we have discussed. I have visualized this entire presentation on why we need to draw, how to draw, and what are the resources we need to consider. There are a couple of books which I referred and have been reading from past few years. I found it quite valuable. People find it difficult to understand what kind of stationery we should have. Well, I'm quite minimal. I just keep pilot pens, two pilot pens, blue, black, some basic pencil, paper, a four size paper is already always there on our table, and one A5 size notebook with at least 100 GSM, because the pen doesn't get bleed, and uh, it feels good to scribble it out there, and basic abstra pencil, or any pencil which you have. Remember our pizza, as the problem solver, and uh, that's how we have learned so far. I would love to see you uh, around, and if you have any questions or you, you want to collaborate to map it out any problem, I would love to volunteer for that. And thank you so much for being here and uh, engaging. Presentation, let's see the unseen using visual thinking. Thank you.